Well, to <laughs> continue with our discussions on uh, the, the improvements of the Lockhart Martinelli correlations, which I should say. So, initially, as I have already mentioned, the Lockhart and Martinelli correlation, this was applied for your uh, adiabatic two phase, two component flow systems in horizontal pipes. Okay. So, after that, the next modification which people had suggested were firstly, they noticed two things. If you notice the graph which has been plotted here, you find the people they noticed that this the curves are not continuous throughout. Okay. They show certain, they are not smooth actually, they show certain discontinuity of slope and people thought that this must be associated with a change of flow pattern. Because with flow pattern, naturally the pressure drop characteristics are bound to change since the interfacial distributions are different for the different flow patterns. Okay. This was the first observation which people found. The next thing which people observed were that these particular curves they are dependent, they are shown as if they are completely independent of all input parameters, but they have a dependence on flow velocity okay, or they are dependent on mass flux and mostly these particular correlations they are applicable for a mass flux g between 500 to 1000 kg per meter square, square second. This was what they had noticed. People have plotted this for different mass flux situations and they found that there is a definite influence of mass flux on x. I do not have the plots, but any particular textbook will give you the dependence of x on mass flux. You find that there are definite different curves which you obtain when you plot these, uh, these particular this, phi, this x with g and they found the original curve which was given that was applicable for a mass flux between 500 to 1000 kg per meter square second. So, this was the first thing. So, th so, these two were the first thing which were noticed in this particular case. Now, the first modification in for this particular situation was proposed by Martinelli and Nelson. For they observed, they observed that the correlation has been developed for two phase two component system as I have already told you and that too at low pressure close to atmospheric and its application to the range of condition outside the range for which this empirical correlation was developed is definitely not recommended. This is something very, very understandable for any empirical correlation that you develop. You cannot use Moody's plot f equals to 16 by Re if the flow is not laminar is not it. So, that is common for all empirical correlations. So, subsequently for Martin, uh, Martinelli and Nelson, these co-workers what they did, they tried to generalize it. They found out that this was also applicable for single component two phase flow situations as well and they could be used for steam water mixture under low pressure conditions. But for prediction of pressure drop during forced circulation boiling they found that Martin and Nelson, these workers, they found that the correlation is not always applicable. So, they tried to improve it. They assumed that for forced convection boiling, both the phases would be in turbulent, turbulent flow. Okay. So, naturally the graph here, which is applicable for phi L T T, that particular graph will be applicable. Okay. So, the correlation of frictional pressure gradient, it is expressed by Martinelli and Nelson as phi L O square because that is much more convenient in boiling and condensation as I have told you. So, if I consider the modifications of Lockhart Martinelli correlation or the separate cylinder model, the first m modification was given by Martinelli and Nelson. Nelson modification which enables Lockhart Martinelli correlation to be used for forced circulation boiling. So, for this what they did instead of phi L square they plotted phi square L O. Okay. And they used this particular situation for the, for the case where 
both the phases are turbulent turbulent they they plotted phi square l o versus x square and uh, then what they did they assumed thermodynamic equilibrium at all conditions and then applied this phi l t t correlation to atmospheric pressure steam water flow and then they also tried to find out the relationship under critical pressure conditions and then for intermediate pressure conditions they tried to interpolate the graph between the atmospheric pressure and the critical pressure. So, accordingly they generated a family of curves for different pressure conditions for steam water flow and they found out that more or less with a value of c equals to 1.36 the different values of c which I had given here. So, they found out that with the value of c equals to 1.36 more or less the relationship can be expressed. So, from phi l square sorry this was phi l square versus x square for the turbulent turbulent flow regime they could obtain the graphs for atmospheric pressure and under critical pressure conditions and after that they generated a curve of phi l o square with the mass quality and from this particular curve they found that it was easier to find out the two phase pressure gradient here. So, accordingly they proposed a revised multiplier co correlation to fit steam water data over a range of pressures. So, their thing is their modification according to their modification they proposed a modified or revised multiplier correlation revised multiplier correlation which could be applicable for a range of pressure ok which could be could because your whenever it is, it is a change of phase then under that condition your pressure becomes very important. So, in this particular case they plotted the, the curves and the for low pressure situation and they found that the curves did not become asymptotic under the critical conditions where the two phases become in indistinguishable. So, accordingly they modified the data and they found out a revised multiplier correlation to fit data for steam water mixtures over a range of pressure and they found out that this relationship it was good for steam water, but it was not accurate for other fluids at the same reduced pressure. What do we expect that for the same redu reduced pressure means the ratio of pressure to critical pressure. So, under these condition from the law of corresponding states which we have already studied in thermodynamics it is expected that the same correlation should be applicable for all fluids under the same reduced condition that was not that did not happen. Although you have they found that this particular correlation this was applicable for your steam water mixture they could not use it or, th or the correlation was not accurate for other fluids under the same conditions of reduced pressure and for they, they found out they thought that this arises because the correlation does not have a surface tension parameter ok. So, therefore, what they found out was that this particular correlation this Lockhart Martinic correlation did not contain a surface tension as a parameter and therefore, the part of the pressure effect which was observed by the researchers this was due to the variation of surface tension of water with pressure this is the thing which people found out ok that they, they proposed this this was not applicable. not applicable for fluids for other fluids other than steam water at same p by p c reason surface tension parameter not included in original correlation. So, this was their observation that al although it was very good for steam water cases, but it was not good for other liquids and that is the reason they attributed that the surface tension parameter has not been included and a part of the pressure effect which has been observed by researchers 
that was due to the variation of surface tension of water with pressure ok. So, in this particular way they uh, they observed this and this mass flux effect this was observed by a large number of researchers. If you take up any textbook say for example, the handbook of multiphase systems which is the by Hitzroni you will find that they have given you a curve or a family of curves where this Lockhart Martinelli parameter it varies as a function of mass flux and they found out that the curves they correspond to the Lockhart Martinelli correlation for lower mass flux and they converge with the homogeneous flow model for higher mass flux. Quite an expected situation because for lower flow conditions only the two fluids will be under separated flow and as we go for higher and higher mass fluxes naturally they will tend to disperse into one another. Hmm. So, therefore, it was observed by Hetzroni and he has also shown it by a family of curves. I did not reproduce these curves here. They found out that the Martinelli-Nelson correlation approached at low mass flux g less than 1360 kg per meter square second and model fits or rather curve fits homogeneous flow model. more closely at high mass flux. For which G is greater than 2000 to 2500 kg per meter square second. Okay. So, this was also now not accounted by the Martinelli correlation. So, there were two, two problems. One was in the original correlation the pressure effect was not very well taken care of and the mass flux effect was not very well taken care of. The other thing is the curves they show a definite discontinuity in slope which shows that this particular discontinuity probably is, is related with the flow pattern transitions. So, if this pressure effect is not taken into account then naturally what happens for two phase two component it is fine, but for single component two phase flows naturally pressure effect becomes very important. Martinelli and Nelson they tried to try to derive correlations taking this pressure effect into account. So, they obtained curves for atmospheric pressure and they also obtained curves for the critical pressure and then they interpolated between the two extreme curves to obtain the curves for other pressure conditions as well and based on the curves of phi l turbulent turbulent as a function of x square they try to generate curves for phi square l o as a function of mass quality. Since they consider change of phase, so, uh, so when we start from saturated conditions and we undergo change of phase with heat flux inside the pipe naturally we have seen that phi square l o is much more appropriate than phi square l. So, they tried to generate those particular curves, but yet they found that although it was fine for steam water cases, but it could not be applied for other fluids. Now, this again they accounted for the fact that the surface tension is also a function of pressure and since surface tension parameter is not included in the correlation that is why although it is good for steam water it is not good for other fluids. The other fact which was not accounted for was there was a definite effect <coughs> of mass flux. So, these this Martinelli Nelson correlation the Lockhart Martinelli correlation while they were appropriate for lower mass fluxes between 500 to 1000 kg per meter square we found that the mass flux curves or the curves with mass flux as parameter they corresponded more closely to the homogeneous flow, flow model for higher mass fluxes. When the mass fluxes they exceed 2000 to 2500 kg per meter square then definitely the homogeneous flow model is better when there is a lower mass flux say from 500 to 1000 or less than 1360 kg per meter square second then this Martin Nelson correlation was appropriate. So, the first thing which they could do is to, to modify the correlation for other pressure conditions for steam water flows, but yet they could not use it for other fluids. So, for other fluids the next correlation came up, the next modification this correlation was proposed by Baroxy. This is the most widely used correlation for fluids other than steam water flows. Now, this particular correlation the only problem of this correlation is it is a graphical correlation. 
the graphical correlation if you find that they relate the two phase multiplier the phi L square with the property index. If you see the property index it contains the ratio of viscosity of the gas phase with the viscosity of air and the ratio of the, vis of the sorry the ratio of viscosity of the liquid phase with the viscosity of water and the ratio of density of the liquid with the density of water. This is not very well given the ratio basically if you write it down the ratio is something of this sort it is mu L by mu G whole to the power 0 0.2 V L by V G to the power no, nothing no power. So, th so they basically try to correlate phi L O square it is not very clearly written the this was the x axis and the y axis was phi square L O. Okay. So, they obtained two separate set of curves for if you observe this particular graph this is for two different mass velocities. They basically they had generated four set of curves okay, for four mass velocity conditions or four mass flux conditions. If you have to deal with any other mass flux conditions then it can be done by interpolation between the mass fluxes which are given here. So, therefore, they generated a set of four set of curves or four family of curves for four different mass flux conditions and for each particular set they try to relate omega square uh, sorry phi square L O with a property index term. So, depending upon the property index they could use it and the basic curves which were there the first curve which they obtained this correlated your phi square L O with your the property index which has been given. This particular curve it had been generated for g equals to 1356 kg per meter square second. So, once you, you have this particular curve you are in a position to find out phi square L O. There was a certain mistake which I made this is the original curve which he proposed baroxy. This curve it correlates phi square L O with the property index which I have already mentioned. So, from this particular curve if you know the quality or the mass fraction of the two phase mixture then using the property index you can find out the two phase multiplier phi square L O from where you can find out the frictional pressure gradient. Now, this is for a particular mass flux if you have to deal with other mass fluxes what you need you need a correction factor. Now, this correction factor is proposed by this set of curves. These curves they seem to be very erratic and it is very ambiguous sort of a thing, but they are very very effective and they give more or less accurate results. Okay. So, once you sorry once you find out the two phase multiplier from this you can get it for a particular mass flux. For other mass fluxes what you have to do you have to defer to these particular curves. They give you a sort of a correction factor as a function of property index. This correction factor this is represented as omega it, it, it I do not know whether it is evident here this particular correction factor is omega. So, therefore, the second set of plots these plots they serve to, to correct the phi square L O which we obtained from here. Okay, from here we want a phi square we have obtained a phi square L O this is corrected by the omega which can be obtained from this particular curves and finally, from this the expression of the frictional pressure gradient which we get it is obtained as minus d p d z f this is 2 f L O g square v L by d this is the frictional pressure gradient for liquid flowing or the entire mixture flowing as liquid this into phi square L O this is the correction factor this gives you the frictional pressure gradient for a mass flux of G as something of this sort okay. and after that this is for a particular mass flux after that what we can after that what we can do we can simply multiply this with an omega this phi square L O has been obtained for G equals to 1356 kg per meter square second. 
then you multiply this with omega this finally this whole expression finally gives you the frictional pressure gradient for the two phase separated flow for any particular fluid other than air water mixtures. Now, tell me if this portion is clear to you how to use the Baroxy correlation. This correlation is specifically for fluids other than air water. Clear? For steam water, air water we had already discussed air water or steam water. For other fluids other than air water, steam water. We found out that Martley Nelson was not appropriate for this particular case. So, in this particular case what we can do is if we have to deal with other fluids then we have to go for the Baroxy correlation. This correlation is entirely graphical. What it does it? It generates a set of two sets of curves. What are these curves? First curve it gives you phi square LO as a function of property index with quality as parameter. From here you can find out phi square LO for G equals to 1356 kg per meter square second. Now naturally you have to deal with other G values as well. When you have to deal with other G values as well then you need a correction factor. This correction factor is again plotted as a function of property index in this set of curves. From here you can find out omega and then finally the frictional pressure gradient can be obtained from the expressions which I have written down where the first portion it contains the frictional pressure gradient when the entire mixture is flowing alone as water fine or alone as a liquid fine. This is multiplied with the two phase multiplier which gives us the equivalent frictional pressure gradient when under the two phase flow conditions in separated flow. Okay. This gives you the two phase flow pressure drop for G equals to 1356 kg per meter square second. For other G you have to include this omega, you have to multiply this with omega. So, this finally gives you the frictional pressure gradient expression. In order to calculate frictional pressure gradient when a two phase mixture flows as a separated flow situation. This is the most widely used correlation for fluids other than air water or steam water. It can be used directly with systems other than the important part is it can be used. This is the important part of this correlation. It can be directly used for systems other than steam water. Now, what Chisholm did was there was a third these are just certain suggestions you need not mug up these correlations or anything these are certain things to show you that the extent of efforts which people have given for developing the different thing. What Chisholm did they proposed a simple method to incorporate the effect of mass velocity on phi L square what they did. If you remember we had a C expression here. So, this particular C they defined it as a very elaborate function of mass flux and certain other quantities. So, their correlation basically there is no point in just you can see the form and you can see that the, the extent of complexity which is there here plus V G by V L whole to the power 0 0.5 plus V L by V G whole to the power 0 0.5. So, this is the correlation where lambda equals to 0 0.5 2 to the power 2 minus n minus 2. So, this was the this was the type of correlation which Chisholm proposed and this particular correlation this incorporated the effect of mass velocity on phi L square by assuming that C is not a constant as was proposed by Lockhart Martinelli correlation, but it is a very complex function and this n it has different values for smooth tubes, rough tubes for different pressure for different mass flux this n has got different value. So, there are big big charts which you can see and you can find out the value of n for your particular situation, for your particular tube, for your particular mass flux, for your particular pressure conditions accordingly you can find out the value of n, substitute it 
find out lambda and then you can find out c from here and you can do it. Now, this method it can be adopted for systems other than steam water flows simply by calculating the property index value for the system considered. But remember one thing this methodisms method it is not recommended when property index value is less than 0 0.01. For the, under such circumstances the Baroxi correlation is recommended. So, so remember this method <coughs> not recommended property index less than 0 0.01 Baroxi method to be used. For such circumstances, this Baroxi method has to you has to be used. Okay. Now, now there are certain other set of correlations also. I would not like to go into all the details. The <coughs> there is a fiddle correlation as well. Okay. So, <coughs> other than this Baroxi correlation, there is a fiddle correlation. You just remember, I'll not go into the details of everything. But more or less, the most common thing which we use is Lockhart Martinelli or the Martinelli Nelson curves. If you have to go for other fluids, we use the Baroxi correlation. But we have, or rather, there have been certain improvements of other correlations as well. Now, in this particular case, there is just one thing which I would like to mention that over the past say half a century yet, uh, over the past 50 years or so lot of correlation have been proposed there has been improvements over the existing correlation and this process is still now going still now we cannot say that this method is definitely very very appropriate to find out the frictional pressure gradient for a two fluid model or for separated flow conditions now this arises because two phase flow is a completely random phenomena now, when we try to develop correlations, what are the parameters that we consider? We consider say one is your flow rates or we consider say mass flux as one. Okay? Then we consider say the <coughs> pressure and then we consider the, uh, the main things is maybe the channel cross sectional geometry, channel cross sectional geometry and dimension. Okay, then phase physical properties. We always think that whenever two phase flow occurs, these are the things which are important. Okay, <laughs> mass flux is a function of these things. So generally, sorry, 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 this is all right. So generally, we we consider that the empirical correlations they should be based on the channel cross sectional geometry and dimension because it is the contact of the channel wall with the fluid which gives you the wall shear stresses. Okay? The phase physical properties definitely must be important, the pressure, the mass flux etcetera must be important. But remember one thing, when two phase flow occurs, then in that case, the way the two phases are introduced that is very important. Okay? And we do not know what is the developing length for two phase flows. Under certain circumstances, there cannot be any developing length. For example, when there is change of phase occurring. Okay, when we give some heat flux and there is change of phase which, is, which occurs, then the entire pipe is a developing uh, length or, or it, it uh, consists of de developing flow. So, therefore, unless these things can be considered a proper correlation, a proper relationship to find out the frictional pressure gradient is not possible. Because we just take the core things, maybe the channel dimension, the phase physical property, or at most whether the pipe is rough or smooth, just the things which we use for single phase flow situations. Okay? But apart from this, two phase flow being a much more complex and a much more random phenomena, there are other things also which we cannot account for. If the flow is over the entire thing, the flow is unsteady state. If over the entire range, the flow is a developing type of flow, say counter current flow. In counter current flow, what is the developing length to tell me? For the entire range, the liquid is entering, the gas is going up. For the throughout the entire pipe, the flow is developing. When there is change of phase, till the entire liquid converts or gets converted to the vapor phase, 
there is simply change of flow so it is a totally developing flow type of a thing so under such circumstances how can you think that a single correlation will be able to predict your frictional pressure drop for all the flow distributions which are encountered when uh, saturated liquid is entering it is changing phase and uh, as the, it, it flows up and up more and more amount of vapor is being produced when more amount of vapor is pr produced the distribution between like liquid and vapor changes so naturally the frictional pressure gradient cannot be predicted by one particular method in this particular case isn't it so due to all these uncertainties due to all these anomalies we find that there is no unique method for finding out the frictional pressure gradient. At the same time, there is no point in going for more and more complex situations because as you go for more and more complex correlations, the amount of uncertainties associated with finding of the constants becomes much more. So, therefore, a balance has to be struck and depending upon your particular flow situation, you have to assume or you have to adopt a proper correlation. So, more or less for your purpose, your Lockhart Martinelli correlation and the Baroxy correlation, Martinelli Nelson curves, these are sufficient. Now, before I end, I would like to discuss one particular situation which is, which since because of its industrial application, it is very well means it, it is used so frequently that a set of graphical correlations are available and computing that particular situation is very easy. That particular situation is flow of boiling water in horizontal circular pipes. Now, for this particular case, under low pressure conditions for a circular pipe under, in, under horizontal condition, we find that each and every pressure gradient term that has been expressed as a function of your mass fraction and other input parameters graphically in such a good way that just by referring to those curves or just by referring to those curves, you, you will be in a position to find out the pressure drop or the pressure gradient when boiling water flows through a pipe. So, we will just discuss those particular graphical techniques before we end the class. Okay? So, next the thing we are going to do is, I will take a different Now, in this particular case, if you find out, you see that what was the original derivation which we did when we were deriving the two fluid model, the, the mixture momentum equation which we obtained, what was that? This was equal to minus d p d z frictional, which you can express it as tau w 2 phase your <laughs> wetted perimeter by A or you, you can express it as F w 1 plus F w 2 in whatever way you can express it. So, the frictional pressure gradient plus the acceleration pressure gradient if you remember the expression we had finally obtained the expression something of this sort. I do not know you must have have this derivation in your plus your g sin theta into rho T p which is nothing but alpha rho g plus 1 minus alpha rho l. This was the basic definition which or rather this was the basic expression which we had derived for the mixture from the mixture momentum equation for two fluid model. I presume you remember this particular expression is not it. Now, in this particular expression if we assume that the tube is horizontal and liquid enters under saturated flow conditions and one horizontal straight pipe no change in area. So, therefore, the acceleration pressure gradient due to change in area that cancels out horizontal. So, therefore, your g sin theta path cancels out. So, under that condition and there is a constant heat flux. What does this constant heat flux term imply can you tell me? When I tell you that there is a constant heat flux, what does it imply? Louder? Dx dz equal to? It is constant. 
Okay. So, constant heat flux it automatically implies d x d z this is nothing but 4 heat flux or rather yeah we can put it as I think we had put it as phi is not it d g this is there. So, moment d g h the uh, uh, enthalpy of vaporization all these are constant. So, constant heat flux automatically implies that your the uh, change of quality is linear with distance is not it or d x d z this is equal to c or this is equal to constant ok. And the boundary conditions are x equal to 0 at z equals to 0 and say x equals to x at z equal to l is not it. So, this is the other assumption that we took up. Now, based on these assumptions if we integrate this particular equation in order to obtain the pressure gradient under low pressure conditions. When I say low pressure conditions what does it mean? It means that the variation of specific volume with pressure is not there. In other words we can assume V g V l to be constant it does not vary with pressure. So, under such circumstances if we integrate it to obtain the pressure drop for a length l of the pipe conduit what will we get? Okay. For low pressure conditions conditions assuming <laughs> constant phase properties what can we do? We can simply integrate it this the expression minus d p from p 1 to p 2 okay. and this frictional pressure gradient since it is boiling water naturally it will be expressed in terms of phi square L o entire mixture flowing as liquid because that is the entry condition agreed. So, therefore, this can be expressed as 2 f L o g square V L by d into phi square L o yes or no you tell me. Okay. The two phase frictional pressure gradient expressed as a function of the single phase pressure gradient when the entire mixture flows as liquid. So, that is the entry condition under this this case. Okay. Now, this phi square L o this should be or this should be varying with your quality is not it? This should vary with quality. So, therefore, this should be 0 to x d x or in other words 0 to l d l it does uh, sorry 0 to l d z ok because quality varies with length in a linear fashion. Any place you do not understand you just tell me to repeat plus g square your 0 to x your d of x square v g by alpha plus 1 minus x whole square v l by alpha ok plus your g sin theta integral 0 to l alpha rho g plus 1 minus alpha rho l into d z. Tell me whether you have understood the integration which I have done in order to find out the pressure drop over a conduit of length l where the conduit diameter is d and the more or less the other terms they are self explanatory. This part I presume you have understood. Agreed. So, therefore, if we integrate it then what do we get? Now, remember one thing this g sin theta 0 to l d z this if it is converted to a variable x then what does it become? This becomes we know that d x d z equals to constant and this constant is nothing but equal to x by l. Okay, because at x equal to z equals to 0 x equal to 0 at, at z equals to l x equal to x. Okay. So, therefore, if you have to have to make conversions then this term it becomes just see whether you understand g sin theta l by x 0 to x alpha rho g plus 1 minus alpha rho l into d x. Can we write it in this particular form? Why do I want, want to make this conversion? because I can find out how alpha varies with x. Okay. So, whatever be the length the variation of alpha with x this is very very evident okay. and graphs are available for this. 
I have the got those particular graphs. See, this was one particular graph where we show how vo void fraction varies with x with pressure as a parameter. Okay, so if you want to find out how alpha varies with x, what we do? We simply go there. We calculate the x. Calculating x is very easy. What is the pressure under which we are operating? Go to that particular pressure parameter, and you can find out void fraction. You know that the quality is changing from say <coughs> zero to sixty over this particular pipe length. So for <coughs> or maybe ten to sixty. So accordingly, you can calculate the void fractions. For that particular pressure conditions, and you can find out the void fraction. You can substitute it here. So, thing is, we do not know how your void fraction varies with length. It varies with length just because quality varies with length. How quality varies with length, we know it is a linear variation. Okay, but how void fraction varies with length, we do not know because we do not know how void fraction varies with quality. Is it clear to you? So, what we do? We try to express the basic e equation. It had the variation of void fraction with z, the axial distance. We simply converted it to the variation of void fraction with quality. Okay, we simply converted the variable from z to x. And why? Because in order to find out alpha as a, as a function of x and pressure, standard graphs are available. Remember, only for water under Fixed set of conditions, which are horizontal pipe, no area change, more or less low to moderate pressure, constant heat flux. So, for all these situations, curves are available. So, therefore, what do we find? The final expression in this particular case, this reduces to it's something of this sort. If you see, your delta p, this is nothing but equal to. If you see, this gives you. 2 f l o g square by d integral 0 to x phi square l o d x. Here also it has been converted from 0 to x from 0 to z phi, because phi square l o how it varies with quality. If that is given, then we can use it for all pipe dimensions, is not it? Just if we know the change of quality. And this plus g square v l just see if you understand we are integrating this one term by term. Now, for this case your variable is x. So, from here it is 0 to x just try to understand this part. Okay? And again for this part if you take this is going to be your when x equal to 0 1 minus x equals to 1 is not it. So, here it is d of this 1 to 1 minus x see if you understand this part or not. Okay? So, when you, int when you integrate this, this becomes x square v g by alpha minus 0. Clear? And when, when you are integrating this part, what it becomes? It becomes 1 minus x whole square v l by alpha minus 1. Do you get the point? Just because the limits of integration are different. So, therefore, on differentiating for to get in this particular case is g square just a minute here I made a mistake g square uh -huh, sorry sorry there has to be a l here very sorry and the 1 minus x here because what I have what I have done this was actually 0 to z dz I have changed the limits is not it. And so this plus g square v l x square by alpha v g by v l plus 1 minus x whole square by 1 minus alpha minus 1 plus g sin theta l by x integral 0 to x this is d x this is the final expression tell me if there is, but this has been derived on the first assumption that your quality variation with axial distance is linear. Now, if you observe this equation we find in order to find out pressure drop what are the things that you require? One is you require how this particular term varies with quality. Now, all these graphs they are widely available for boiling water in straight horizontal pipes. 
the graph for this particular case is here. Nay, it is not this one. Ah, this is the graph. Okay. We find that we have got ready made curves for phi square L O 1, but this particular term which we have already derived if you see this particular term, this gives you the this is a component of the frictional pressure gradient. There is by mistake another integral has come, just ignore it. Okay. So, this particular quantity if is plotted with pressure as a function of quality. So, from here forth you can get, if you see the expression which I have written down, the expression which I have written down in my in just now which I have written down. So, this is basically the quality which has been plotted as a function of quality as well as pressure. So, from the curve which I have shown here, we find out that from this particular curve, we can find out the phi 1 by x phi square L O this term as a function of quality and pressure. So, moment I can do this, if you see this particular expression and we find that F L O G square L D everything is known for you. Okay? So, the first term it can be calculated. Then we also have standard curves for calculating this particular function as a, sorry this particular function. If you see the transparency which I have prepared, we find that this as a function of quality and pressure is also available for flow of boiling water in pipes. This is that particular function. If you see this is that particular function where this R 2, this R 2 it has been plotted, this R 2 is nothing but the, the term within the parenthesis which I had derived. So, this R 2 also it is it is predicted as a function of pressure and as a function of exit quality. So, now we find that if it is the flow of boiling water in pipes, then in under for that particular situation we find that set of three curves are available. The curves they give you or they enable you to calculate the acceleration pressure gradient as a function of pressure and ex exit quality from this graph, the frictional pressure gradient as a function of pressure and quality from this graph and alpha as a function of pressure and quality from this particular graph. Once these graphs are there, then by using these particular curves, we can find out those particular portions of the gravitational, frictional and acceleration pressure gradient, which cannot be computed or which is difficult to compute. So, from for those standard graphs are available and these can be used and they can be found out. The reason for pro pro proposing standard graphs for these particular situations are they are very frequently encountered in industries. Now, when you have to calculate pressure drops in industries, it is very difficult for you to do long, long integrations and to find them out. But if you have some such ready made curves, then very fast the technical people or the technicians they can just refer to the graph and they can find out the pressure drop at a much faster rate. Is it clear to you? And since this boiling water in pipes, it is very frequently encountered. So, for this particular situation, curves are available. This is not available for other situations as well. Okay. So, with this thought, we come to the end of the separated flow model. Just in a nutshell, if, if I will tell you what are the things that we have done, you will find that the first thing we did, we derived the two fluid model. We considered the two phases to flow separately and to occupy different cross sectional areas of the pipe. Okay. After that what we did, we found out the mass momentum and energy equation for the two, two fluids separately and then we tried to combine them to find out the mixture momentum equation. We tried to find out the condition of choking for two phase flow from the mixture momentum equation. Then we took up the situation for phase change as well. We found out that when there is phase change, then apart from momentum change due to the interaction between fluid 1 with the wall, fluid 2 with the wall, fluid 1 with fluid 2, there is an additional force which is involved due to the momentum change which is associated with the phase change of some fraction of the mixture from the liquid to the gas or vice versa. Okay? So, therefore, we incorporated it and we obtained the component momentum balances and the mixture momentum balance and the condition of choking from there. We found out that in order to use this equation 
for homogeneous flow model we had to find out the frictional pressure gradient. We calculated the frictional pressure gradient by incorporating the two phase multipliers. Here along with the frictional pressure gradient it was very important for us to calculate the void fraction as well. Okay? So, the empirical approaches again in terms of frictional two phase multipliers were adopted phi L square and phi G square were adopted and we found that there are large number of empirical correlations for finding out the frictional pressure gradient as well as the void fraction. The oldest and the most widely used is Lockhart Martinelli correlation. This has been modified for other fluids by Baroxy and this has been modified for steam water flow using Martinelli Nelson and so accordingly we can use and we can find out the frictional pressure gradient as well as the void fraction. Once we have done this we are in a position of finding out the, the pressure drop for our situation as well. Okay? Now, this finishes off our separated flow model. Now, in the next class, we will be applying the homogeneous, the drift flux and the separated flow model for different flow situations. Maybe we will be taking up the bubbly slug and the annular flow cases. Now, before I end, there is just one question which I would like to ask you. I had given up a problem in the class and I told you to solve the problem. Have you found out the pressure drop for the homogeneous flow case and for the separated flow case? Can you tell me which pressure drop was higher? If you have done it correctly, then probably you have found out that the delta P as obtained from the homogeneous flow model was much higher and the pressure drop which you had calculated from the separated flow model was much lower. So, remember one thing, these are the two extremes which I told you to consider. Your actual pressure drop will lie within this particular range and for this, this suggest, suppose you want a very high pressure drop so that there is no leakage from the tank. Then in that case, what you have to do? You have to keep a homogeneous mixture of the two of the two phases in, in the tank and you have to ensure that the homogeneous two phase mixture flows out through the nozzle. If you want a low pressure drop from pumping power considerations, then what you have to do? You have to separate the two phases and you have to arrange the nozzle such that the interface lies within the nozzle so that the two phases flow as separated flow through the nozzle. Under that condition, you will get the minimum pressure drop. So, depending upon your condition, whether you do not want a leakage or whether you want a low pressure drop, your flow distribution or the arrangement of the two fluids have to be decided accordingly. There was one more interesting thing about the problem. If you notice, it comprised of a very high gas and a very low liquid flow rate, which shows that bubbly flow is not possible in this particular case. So, what is the homogeneous flow distribution that you can adopt here? It has to be the droplet flow distribution. So, whenever you are given two phase flow problems either in your exam or something, remember that other than the final answer, this type of analysis is much more important. So, you have to analyze the situation and you have to write the answers accordingly and you will be evaluated even if your answer is wrong, but the logics are correct or they are wrong and strong, then also you will get marks. Okay. So, I will be mainly looking for your reasoning power other than how well you can represent the thing for your for any particular evaluation of this particular subject. Okay. So, thank you very much. In the next class, we will be dealing with flow patterns. We will be applying this simple analytical model to the different flow patterns and then we will go for some classes on boiling and condensation and after that some classes on the development of instrumentation for different two phase flow situations. Thank you very much.